How, <clears throat> excuse me, how do the energy dependent feedback loops exemplify an Amobius strip and the solar analemma link biophysically constrained biodiversity via the laws of thermodynamics to the grandfather paradox? Uh, that's getting, the questions are getting tougher and tougher to answer. But basically, we keep going back to any energy dependent movement along the path of the Mobius strip leads back to the point of origin of the initial energy dependent change. So in the context of the solar analemma and quantum entanglement, which gets even trickier, the point of origin is the creation of the sun's energy. You don't have any of this going on without the creation of the sun's energy. Quantum entanglement can be visualized in this by the fact that the quantized energy does not leave the Mobius strip when I twist it until the strip breaks. For example, if I use this rubber band, I can, I cut it, and, oh, I just broke it. I cut and twisted it and taped it back together to make another Mobius strip. And if I twist it and twist it and twist it, as long as it doesn't break, the energy is contained in there. As soon as it breaks, it's like, okay, where did the energy go? The creation of the sun established the laws of thermodynamics, which simply say, state that the created energy can't be destroyed. If I continue to twist the Mobius strip until it broke like I just did, the energy would be gone from the strip just as surely as it wouldn't be there if the sun didn't rise tomorrow. The twisted rubber brand band that breaks just became a visual representation of how supercoiled DNA, which is coiled much, much tighter than anybody can imagine, the supercoiled DNA is a representation of everything else, but it's also a representation of how the sun's energy is biophysically constrained in our genes. The grandfather paradox is based on the claim that removes energy dependent constraints. The paradox is built on the assumption that if you could travel back in time and kill your grandfather, you would not be born, so you could not travel back in time to kill your grandfather. In the context of the solar analemma, the Mobius strip, and supercoiled DNA, life and death do not require time travel. Life requires a biophysically constrained space-time continuum. Death is caused by broken constraints and the negative supercoiling of DNA. When everything unwinds, that's it. So in the context of the Mobius strip, an energy-dependent continuum is represented by the fact that no matter what you do, the energy that enables you to do it is biophysically constrained until the strip is broken or in my example the rubber band is unwound. If you could travel back in time to kill your grandfather his energy would still be there although his energy would not directly affect your supercoiled DNA or the hormones that affect your genes and behavior in the same way that he did when he was still alive. That does not mean your hormone organized and hormone activated behavior or the behavior of an insect moving inside the constraints of the Mobius strip is not energy dependent. Obviously it is energy dependent. So what that means is that nothing involving energy occurs outside the context of the solar analemma, the representation of the Mobius strip, or outside the context of supercoiled DNA. The grandfather paradox is eliminated by any example in which all energy on Earth is constrained in supercoiled DNA. So I use the honeybee as an example of how the food energy dependent pheromone controlled behavioral development of an insect constrains the energy that allows it to start from and return to any point along the Mobius strip. That's what also the arrows can represent. Only the insect can go back and forth, but everything's still going to happen within this context. I want to make it perfectly clear that the insect, or 
whatever organism that's operating within this context, can choose to go in any direction at any time. It can go forward or reverse, no matter what direction it takes. If it fails to find food, it will not reproduce. It will starve to death and leave no offspring. Bang, that's it, you know, it's gone. So, the laws of thermodynamics ensure that only organisms that eat and reproduce become productive members of a species. Not if this happens. The creation of new species is quantized energy dependent and in that context there is no grandfather's paradox. You and your grandfather are members of the same species. Only a biologically uninformed theorist or philosopher could turn that fact into a paradox that involves killing an ancestor or turning your ancestor into a non-human primate or a species of bacteria or something else. It's like, that's, that's inappropriate, okay? So, <laughs> speaking nicely, but for another example of what I sometimes call pseudoscientific nonsense, theorists and philosophers link the death of the last universal common ancestor to the evolution of other species outside the context of the solar analemma, the Mobius strip, infinity, supercoiled DNA, or common sense. The common sense to all of this is a sense of smell. Odor and pheromones link all energy dependent changes from ecological variation to ecological adaptations. And most people refer to olfaction as the sense of smell. What 